Hey everybody, my name is Dave Midwest Picker. Welcome to another episode of Midwest Picker Stories. These stories are 100% true, not embellished, not, nothing's made up. These either happened to me or I was there when they happened. Kind of paints a picture of what life was like in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This story takes place in the 90s. I think it goes without saying, don't try this at home. Um, this does describe some medical descriptions, stories, issues. So if you kind of have a weak stomach, viewer discretion is advised. These stories are not earth-shattering, newsworthy stories, but they're pretty funny, gross, amazing, mysterious, so I think you'll enjoy them. And these stories are for entertainment purposes only. All the names have been changed to protect people's privacy. So let's get into the story. This takes place about 1998. I was a nurse manager in a very small nursing home, about 60 beds. And if you haven't seen my previous stories, I'm a registered nurse and I do pretty much paperwork, kind of the pencil pusher kind of guy. I do audits and billing and just all that kind of boring stuff. I was a floor nurse or bedside nurse for about two to three years, but that was 25 years ago. So back in 1998 as a nurse manager, one of my jobs was to do rounding. And when you round, you kind of like leave the office, go out onto the, to the clinical floor, you talk to staff, you talk to the patients, you attend meetings, just kind of the general get a scope of what's going on for the day. Doesn't take long, 15 minutes to 30 minutes. So one day I was making my rounds. I go down to the end of the nursing home, down the hallway, and I go to a nurse's station. And there was two nurses there talking about a mystery. Boy, I love, I love me a good mystery. They were mystified and were trying to figure out a problem, and I was intrigued, so I joined the conversation. Basically, by nature, nurses are problem solvers. We solve problems, we fix issues, and we also are really interested in mysteries. Whodunits, murder mysteries, this mystery. They were discussing an issue with a patient. Um, I'll call him Charles, not his real name and Charles developed a big red area on his face that was not there just a few days before. And these nurses were intrigued and they're like, I'm wondering, you know, what's causing this? Why does he have this? I was intrigued, so I kind of hung around. One of the nurses paged uh, the medical director, a physician, um, and asked him to call back. This is back in the 90s, you would page them and then they would call you back. She explained the situation to the physician. He said he was going to be in. He was planning to come in anyways at a few hours. So he said, no problem, no need to panic. I'll check out the situation when I get there. A few hours later, the physician shows up. He pulls uh, Charles' chart. <laughs> I almost said Charles in charge. He pulls Charles' chart from the rack, opens it up starts looking at the patient's medication list, any known allergies, what his current uh, diet is, just the usual stuff. Now without examining the patient, this is important, the doctor gets his notepad out and he writes a prescription for a steroid cream to be applied to Charles's face. Kind of like a hydrocortisone cream, once a day for seven days, boom, problem solved. That should do the trick. Mystery solve, slams the chart shut, and goes to the next chart. No problem. Sunnyvale Rest, a home for the aged, a dying place, and a common children's game called Kick the Can. The doctor was assuming this was probably an allergic reaction or an autoimmune reaction. Uh, who knows, but he figured that this would clear it up. No problem. The nurses faxed the order to the pharmacy so that this cream would be delivered that night and they would start the treatment the next day. Problem solved. About five days later, I did rounding again and I walked up to the same two nurses and I said, hey ladies, and no, I didn't really say it like that. I said, hey, how's it going? How's Charles doing with the, you know, the red mark on his face or the redness to his cheek? They said the redness was actually getting worse. I'm like, what? They said it's getting worse. It's growing in size, it's huge. And now there's another red spot on the other side of his face. So now he's got this massive red spot on one side and a smaller one on the other. I was like, what the heck? So I decided to check this myself. So I walked down to Charles' room, knock on the door, gain permission to enter, walk in, say, hey Charles, how's it going? And I walked in there and I wanted to see this for myself. 
Charles was sitting in his wheelchair, super nice guy. He greeted me, said hello. He appeared to be reading some mail and uh, he said, hey, read this letter I got from my daughter and he handed me a store receipt. Charles suffered from dementia. He didn't know where he was, what was going on. He didn't know the difference between a, a sock and a sock puppet. I made small talk with Charles. We talked about the weather, current events, news, things like that. And as we talked and socialized, I was looking right at his face and his cheeks and trying to get an assessment of what was going on. And sure enough, one side was really red terribly red and it was growing in size according to the nurses and the other side had a smaller one on that side and sure enough it, it was bad um, but he didn't seem too bothered by it he didn't complain or say anything about it at all he just kind of went about uh, socializing with me and you know playing with his letters so I got up went back to the nurses station and I told the nurses yeah I have no idea that that cream or ointment should have worked. I, I have no idea what that is. I don't even know what it looks like. So the nurse's page of the doctor, he called back right away and they explained to him, uh, not only did his prescription ointment not work, but the redness is worse. It's bigger and now it's on the other side of his face and they need a new order for something. The doctor called back and he said he's gonna do patient rounding tomorrow and he'll address the issue when he gets there tomorrow. Nothing to panic about, nothing to worry about. The next day the doctor shows up, takes Charles' chart out, looks through the chart again without examining the patient, this is important, and he writes a new order. He writes an order for an antifungal cream. Apply this to his face twice a day, times 10 days, problem solved, that'll fix it. The doctor closes the chart, he gets up and he leaves the building. Now the human body is pretty vulnerable to fungal infections on the skin. These are topical fungal infections. On the head, it's called tinea capitis. On the foot, it's called tinea pedis, or athlete's foot. And then you, this is hard to say, you have tinea carruris, which is jock itch. So infections can happen all over the place. They're very common and they're easy to treat. So the nurses ordered the antifungal cream. They did what the doctor said. They applied it to his face, this, this salve, this liniment, this, <laughs> this ointment, this cream. I just love those old words, liniment and salve. I think salve is my favorite. Which is your favorite? Is it liniment or is it salve? We don't use those words often enough anymore. About seven days after this second treatment was started, I was walking down the hall, minding my own business, and I see Charles sitting in his wheelchair and his back to me, and I walked up to Charles. So I walked up to Charles and I turned around and I said, hey Charles, how's it go? What the heck? His face was on fire. It, the redness was all over his face. Both sides, huge, red, super painful looking. Oh man, did it look bad. Charles was like touching his face and the skin was peeling off and he was like peeling the skin and picking at it. And he looked at me and he said, oh man, my face really hurts. This is bad. I was like, yeah, no kidding. I fast walked down to his nurse's station to talk to his nurses that were on duty that day. I was mystified what was going on. This is now the second treatment that has failed and the red areas are growing and now his skin is peeling off and he's complaining of pain and picking at it. I mean, I love a good mystery. Uh, pause the video if you want to and put down in the comments, what do you think is happening to his face before I reveal the answer? Um, I wanna know what you think and be honest, uh, put down what you think it might be. Could be anything, could be alien abduction. So while I was talking to the nurses, I noticed Charles was still, you know, 100 feet down the hall. So I decided I'm going to pop my head in Charles' room and take a look around. So I go in his room and I look at his bed and I'm thinking, okay, you know, does he have bed bugs in here or lice or, or some kind of insect infestation that are like biting his face in the middle of the night while he's sleeping? And then I realized, no, I mean, his bed looks fine. They change the linens all the time. And we would know if there was bugs in there and there never is so that can't be it i know scabies can leave red marks but they usually go like in the armpits and the groin and only on his face that's just odd and then i thought maybe he's like me maybe he sleeps with his hand like under his face on his pillow or is maybe he sleeps with his face on his arm 
these are red marks from sleeping in weird positions all night. And then I thought, well, no, that can't be it because if that was the case, the redness would kind of slowly fade and why was his skin peeling off? So that, that's not an explanation either. And then I scanned the room and I'm like, is his face being burned for some reason? I, it just doesn't make any sense. Does his roommate get up in the middle of the night and slap his face back and forth while he's sleeping? I was mystified. I could not figure this out. A few days later, this same physician was in the building and the nurses said, you got to get down here because Charles is just getting worse and worse and worse. This uh, treatment is not working. So the physician was kind of frustrated and he says, okay, fine. I'm going to go in the room. I'm going to examine Charles myself. Finally, duh. After about five minutes of being in Charles' room and examining Charles himself, the physician comes out with a big grin on his face, sits down at the nurse's station, whips open the guy's chart, and he starts writing an order. The doc looked at us and said, mystery solved. He wrote an order for desitin twice a day, every day for 10 days to Charles' face. And oh, by the way, remove his urinal from his room. Apparently when the doctor went down into Charles's room, he didn't knock and ask for permission. He just barged in and he caught Charles drinking from his urinal and he was spilling urine all over his face. Charles had a severe diaper rash on his face. Sir, no, wait, 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 wait. No, sir, don't, don't drink. You'd keep your mouth shut if you knew it was good for you, buddy. When I heard this, I was like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? How did he pull this off with nobody noticing, nobody catching him, nobody seeing spilled urine anywhere? This was nuts. Sure enough, when they applied Desidin uh, to his face after about five or six days and taking that urinal away from him, the redness disappeared. It slowly healed, the peeling skin was gone, he was cured, mystery solved. So that's the story guys. I think my next story will be either uh, scary or funny or mis not mysterious. I don't know. I'm going to give you guys a break from the gross stories. So I'll come up with some funny ones before I get back to the gross ones. So that's the video guys. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for watching. I hope you didn't get freaked out too much and unsubscribe. I have a lot more stories. Some of them are funny. Um, some of them, none of them are scary, but I'm going to come up with some more and more true stories. Um, I have about 35 total. So I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you know anybody that likes mysteries, um, hit the share button and send it to them. If you know anybody that has a weak stomach and you want to <laughs> pull a prank on them, hit that share button and send it to them. I'm sure they'll enjoy it and you'll probably hear from them. So that's it guys. Till next time. See ya. Yeah.